right. How about we go out like rock stars? Absolutely. Two, three. Did you know Kenny Rogers, the man who spent 65 years establishing himself as America's number one country music icon, had a beautiful romantic history that included five marriages before leaving this world in March 2020? Not only famous for his massive career, Kenny also impressed the audience with his admirable love history. He left behind his widow, Wanda Rogers, who had moved on by finding love again just three years after Kenny Rogers' passing. Although there were happy and romantic moments, let's take a look at some of the painful moments in his personal life that affected his family and his marriages. Kenny Rogers' Upbringing Kenny Rogers grew up in Houston's Fourth Ward, where life was tough and full of challenges. The housing projects where he grew up, the San Felipe Courts, were initially built for white families, which unfortunately resulted in the displacement of families of color. Rogers had a tough time growing up in a big family with not much money. His dad was a carpenter who loved playing music, while his mom worked hard cleaning offices and helping out at the hospital. They never stopped hustling to make sure everything was taken care of. In the face of challenges, Rogers' siblings talked about how their faith and the support of their neighbors helped them stay strong. It was like having a big, caring family right next door. Yep. We were pretty darn poor, admitted Roger's brother Roy in an interview with People magazine. His sister Sandy chimed in, saying that even though they had some money troubles, they always had this unwavering belief that they would conquer them. The Rogers family loved being part of a tight-knit community, not just with their own family, but with everyone around them. Kenny Rogers, the legendary singer, always cherished the importance of being thankful and kind which he embraced since his early days. When Rogers became famous and successful in the 1970s, he didn't forget where he came from. He didn't just see it as a path to fame. He saw it as a chance to show gratitude to the folks who had been there for him from the start. According to the Houston Press, Rogers always made sure to return the favors he had been given throughout his life. Here's a heartwarming story he found out that his old neighbor was having money troubles and needed $600 to fix her car. Rogers didn't waste any time. He quickly sent her a whopping $20,000 and told her to go buy herself a brand new ride. The note said, thanks for helping me pay my rent back in the day. In his 2012 memoir, Luck or Something Like It, Kenny Rogers spilled the beans on his life, sharing both the good times and the tough times that molded him into the person he is today. One of the things he talked about was his dad's fight with drinking too much, which really affected Rogers and made him think hard about what he should do. During an interview with Reuters, Rogers revealed how his dad's alcohol problems and the bad things that happened as a result made him decide to stay away from booze. Rogers decided to never drink alcohol because of his dad's drinking and all the tough times that came with it. And he stuck to that decision for his whole life. He made this choice because he really didn't want to get addicted like his dad and was worried that he might be more likely to because of their genes. But staying sober was really tough for Rogers. It weighed on him emotionally. In his memoir, he revealed a deep sense of regret, the feeling that he never really grasped why his father struggled with alcohol. It's like a puzzle he could never solve. After World War II, things were tough. Jobs were hard to come by and that made life difficult for his dad. Thinking about it, Rogers was really sad that he couldn't understand why his dad became dependent on alcohol. It's a bummer. It was a powerful reminder of how our personal struggles and the world around us can affect each other in interesting ways. But hey, Kenny Rogers didn't let those challenges bring him down. He was like, you know what? I'm going to turn these lemons into some tasty lemonade. Roger's memoir spills the beans on how he turned his life around by diving headfirst into photography. It became his saving grace, helping him find meaning and fill the gaps in his musical journey. Taking photos turned into a fun and relaxing hobby. Furthermore, Rogers used his platform to support those struggling with addiction, sharing from his own personal experiences. Rise to Fame 
Kenny Rogers' rise to fame was fueled by his unwavering passion for music since he was a kid. According to the New York Times, music was a big deal in Kenny Rogers' family. Everyone played instruments, even the extended family. It was just a normal part of their everyday life. Rogers' career took a big turn when producer Larry Butler stepped in and helped shape his musical journey. Rogers finally achieved his long-awaited breakthrough with Butler's help and encouragement. It was a team effort that paid off. Rogers hit it big with his song Lucille, winning a Grammy and skyrocketing his career to new heights. It was a game changer for him. When Rogers won the Grammy, he made sure to thank Larry Butler for helping him out. He really appreciated it. This awesome partnership not only made Rogers super famous, but also broke stereotypes that were holding him back from making it big in the country music scene. Kenny Rogers and Dottie West were not just musical partners, they were also the best of friends. Their bond went far beyond making music together. They worked together on a bunch of albums and made some really popular songs like Every Time Two Fools Collide and Anyone Who Isn't Me Tonight. Their musical chemistry was off the charts. As per country music family, they weren't just work buddies, they were super tight pals outside of the studio. Unfortunately, Kenny Rogers was one of the last people to see Dottie West before she tragically passed away in the early 1990s. It was a heartbreaking situation for him. According to The Boot, West went through some tough times, like getting divorced and going bankrupt. Yikes. In the face of challenges, Rogers was there to lend a helping hand as she worked to rebuild her career and life. Rogers did something really nice for West. He gave him a car. It was a way to help him out and also show how much he valued their friendship, life, and career challenges. In his interviews with Rolling Stone in 2014, Rogers spilled the beans on the hurdles he had to overcome to achieve his musical dreams. Despite the groovy vibes all around him, it wasn't all smooth sailing for him. One big moment in Rogers' career happened when Steve Wynn, realizing he had more to offer, dropped the bomb and told him he was going to be fired. But hey, check this out. Rogers, being a man of his word, stuck to his contract and rocked the stage in a cozy little Las Vegas lounge that could fit about 600 folks. During this time, things got pretty tough for him in his career. As he set out on his own musical journey and tried to land a record deal, he ran into a big obstacle. Rogers kept getting rejected by record companies, and they all said the same thing. He was considered too old for country music. Bummer. Back then, Rogers was in his mid-30s to early 40s, which didn't quite match the young and hip reputation that country music had. But hey, Rogers didn't let anything stop him. He kept going, showing off his never-give-up attitude and refusing to let obstacles get in his way. Dottie West's death. Back on August 31, 1991, something went seriously wrong with West's car while she was on her way to the Grand Ole Opry. She was driving the car that Rogers had kindly given her, but it decided to malfunction at the worst possible time. She reached out to her neighbor for help. Oops! While hurrying to get West to the venue, things took a turn for the worse. The neighbor had a little mishap and crashed into a freeway divider. Unfortunately, West suffered serious internal injuries, which sadly resulted in her passing away a few days later, despite undergoing several surgeries. In a 2014 interview with Rolling Stone, Kenny Rogers shared his thoughts on his friendship with West and how it affected him. He also mentioned a personal goal he had. He really wanted Dottie West to get the recognition she deserved by being inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. And guess what? Four years later, this dream actually came true. Rogers couldn't help but share his excitement on Facebook sending a big congratulations to his dear friend, the amazing Dottie West. Legal Battle In 2012, Kenny Rogers got caught up in a big legal fight that showed how artists often don't get paid enough for their music when it's sold online. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Rogers took Capitol Records to court, arguing that artists deserve half of the money made from online sales, especially digital downloads. It's a battle for fair compensation, this legal stuff wasn't just a one-time thing, you know. Some other famous folks, like the Almond Brothers, Rob Zombie, and Sister Sledge, hopped on board with Rogers and filed their own group lawsuits. Here's the deal. 
there's a big problem that's messing with the music industry. Can you believe it? A whopping $25 billion hasn't made its way to the deserving artists. That's a lot of money just floating around. This figure is all about the money made from selling stuff online, like on iTunes and other platforms. Pretty cool, huh? In his lawsuit against Capitol Records, Kenny Rogers said they kept about $400,000 in profits from his digital music downloads. Quite a sneaky move, huh? So, there was this big legal action that showed how artists were getting ripped off in the digital marketplace. Not cool, right? After trying to work things out with the record company, things got real messy and ended up in court. This lawsuit was a big deal, not just for Kenny Rogers, but for everyone involved. It showed how artists are facing big challenges in the digital age. The old ways of getting paid for music aren't keeping up with how people listen online. It's a tough situation for them. The results of these legal battles had a big impact on artists from all kinds of music, showing that there's a real need for some big changes in the industry to make sure they get paid fairly for their creative work. But then, in 2020, everything changed, and streaming services took over. Streaming music made a ton of money last year in the UK, over one billion pounds. But guess what? Musicians aren't getting their fair share. Haley Bozer, an expert in intellectual property law, pointed out this unfairness. It's time for a change. Can you believe it? Bozer found out that most artists only make less than $200 a year, or maybe around $250. That's way lower than expected. Wow, it's clear that artists are still fighting to get paid fairly in the digital age. We really need some big changes to make sure the music industry is fair and sustainable for everyone involved. Other business venture. In 1991, Kenny Rogers decided to try his hand at the restaurant business by opening Kenny Rogers Roasters. It was meant to be a fun and tasty alternative to the well-known Kentucky Fried Chicken. So the idea for the restaurant was to serve up some delicious rotisserie chicken and corn muffins instead of the usual fried chicken. Pretty cool, right? Oh boy, let me tell you about Kenny Rogers Roasters. It had so much potential, but things didn't quite go as planned. It was a bumpy ride that ended in a big old flop. Back when the restaurant started, rotisserie chickens were all the rage. They even got a shout out on Seinfeld. But Kenny Rogers Roasters had its fair share of obstacles to overcome. Not long after it opened, disaster struck when a company sued Kenny Rogers Roasters for $10 million, claiming they had stolen their idea. Talk about a rough start. In the end, Rogers' restaurant solved the problem by acquiring the smaller company. It was a clever move to ensure their success. But wait, there's more. This legal battle was only the start of the chain's problems. After winning the first legal battle, Kenny Rogers Roasters had a tough time dealing with fierce competition that eventually became too much to handle. The restaurant was having a tough time staying in the game and money troubles started piling up. In 1998, the company hit rock bottom and had to sell the business to avoid going bankrupt. Tough times, huh? After facing these tough times, Kenny Rogers decided to step back from the troubled restaurant chain, both in his personal life and career. And that's how Kenny Rogers Roasters and the famous country singer went their separate ways, closing the chapter on their restaurant adventure. This business, which was supposed to be a cool and exciting alternative to regular fast food, unfortunately couldn't handle the financial struggles and tough competition in the market. Even though most Kenny Rogers Roasters restaurants closed down, a surprising legacy lived on, especially in Southeast Asia. Around 200 locations still had the name and gave people a peek into a different era of the country music legend's career. In 2017, Kenny Rogers called it quits after an amazing 60-year career. Quite a run, huh? Sadly, his retirement didn't last long because he passed away on March 20th, 2020. But his legacy was incredible, reaching across different genres and touching the hearts of millions. Kenny Rogers' Five Wives In his 2012 autobiography, Luck or Something Like It, Kenny Rogers gave readers a close look into his personal life, talking about the ups and downs of his five marriages. It's an interesting and honest read. When the book came out, he had already been married to his fifth wife, Wanda, for 15 years. He didn't hold back and spilled the beans on what he had learned from his past marriages. However, Kenny Rogers died three years ago, 
Now his wife breaks her silence, and before the end of the video, we are going to find out what she said exactly. Rogers, being a stand-up guy, owned up to the fact that his marriages didn't work out. He blamed himself, saying he was too focused on his own goals and not considerate enough. During a chat with Reuters, Rogers looked back on his relationships and sincerely apologized for the effect his decisions had on the women he tied the knot with. He realized that as he got more wrapped up in his work and personal goals, he kind of forgot about the people who mattered to him. Even though it wasn't easy, he made sure to let everyone know that he really, really loved all his wives when they got married. He took all the blame for himself and his crazy music career. At just 19 years old, Kenny Rogers took the plunge into marriage with his girlfriend, Janice Gordon, who was expecting a baby. But their union didn't last long. After divorcing Janice, he married Gene Rogers for three years. He got married a few more times after that. First with Margot Anderson from 1964 to 1976, then with Marianne Gordon from 1977 to 1993, and finally with Wanda Miller in 1997. Marianne Gordon recently shared some interesting insights about her marriage to Rogers in an interview with Closer Weekly. She revealed that every marriage comes with its own unique set of challenges, and theirs was no exception. Gordon spilled the beans that Rogers was really struggling with feeling a bit lost and going through a midlife crisis because he was worried about his career going downhill. According to the Irish Independent, Marianne Gordon and I decided to call it quits on our marriage. We had to go through a divorce settlement, which ended up costing me a whopping $60 million. Ouch. This financial resolution was a big deal after their marriage and showed how things can get complicated when someone famous has to balance their personal life with their fame and success. The last time Kenny Rogers got married, people couldn't help but gossip. After all, there was quite an age gap between him and his wife, Wanda Miller. According to Miller's interview with Fox News, he was much younger than Rogers, which caught the attention of her parents, who happened to be a couple of years younger than the famous singer. Even though people didn't like them at first, the couple's love and compatibility shut everyone up. As time went on, their first meeting wasn't planned at all. It was a lucky coincidence that felt like destiny. Kenny and Wanda had amazing chemistry. It was like fireworks went off as soon as they met. As their relationship grew, it was obvious that fate had brought them together in a way that was just perfect for two souls meant to be. Kenny Rogers' wild ride through five marriages shows just how crazy love, fame, and personal growth can be. And then, in a cute little restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia, the last part of his love story happened when he unexpectedly bumped into Wanda Miller. They had no idea that this unexpected meeting would create a story that went beyond their complicated histories. They were brought together by destiny on a blind date. Talk about a stroke of luck. Meet Wanda Miller, a 26-year-old hostess at PRA who was about to embark on an extraordinary journey. By some stroke of luck, on the exact day when fate brought her together with Kenny Rogers, she had been chatting with a co-worker about her dreams of finding true love. Unbeknownst to her, the universe was already working its magic. One day, Kenny Rogers, a music legend, strolled into PRA without a clue that his life was about to get a wild twist. While savoring his food, he couldn't help but be completely mesmerized by Miller. Curious about the fascinating hostess, Rogers decided to ask about her once he was done eating. After leaving his number, he kicked off a chain of events that would totally change their lives. Exciting stuff. When Wanda Miller got back to work the next day, she was totally blown away by a phone call from Kenny Rogers. At first, she thought her co-workers were just playing a joke on her. But then, after a moment, she realized that it was actually happening for real. With a burst of bravery, Miller made the bold move to give Rogers a call. Little did she know that this would be the start of an exciting new chapter in her life. Their first meeting was totally unexpected and quite adventurous, going against all odds. Little did Wanda Miller know, on that ordinary workday, that it would be the start of a love story with a country music superstar. When Miller's parents found out about their daughter's new relationship, they wasted no time in giving Rogers a call to let him know they were not happy about it. Kenny Rogers, being a stand-up guy, 
promised Miller's parents that he would always be straight with them and Miller. As time went on, something really cool happened. Rogers and Miller's parents became really good friends and formed a special bond. Miller even called them a trio of best friends. This beautiful friendship, fueled by love and respect for Wanda Miller, showed us how understanding and real connections can break through society's expectations and stereotypes about age. In 1997, Kenny Rogers and Wanda Miller got married after dealing with the ups and downs of their relationship for five years. It was a big moment for them. Their marriage, despite all the challenges, became a shining example of love that never gives up and commitment that never wavers. Miller was always there for Rogers, supporting him in every aspect of his life, whether it was personal or professional. After being together for 20 years, Rogers still couldn't stop gushing about how much he loved Wanda and how they were meant to be. Their love story was like a rebellious dance, defying society's rules and showing that age doesn't matter when it comes to love. On top of that, Wanda Miller became the proud mom of twin boys, bringing a whole new adventure to Rogers' journey as a dad. In 2015, Kenny Rogers said he was retiring. At that time, he was 77 years old and had twin boys who were 11 years old. Quite a busy dad. He decided to retire because he had trouble getting around and wanted to hang out with his kids more. Retirement seemed like the best choice. This was a really important moment in Rogers' life where his family and personal happiness became more important than his successful career. In his interviews with the Irish Independent, Rogers openly talked about the unique parts of his marriage. He didn't hold back. He agreed with Miller from the start that they wouldn't have kids when they talked about their future. But things took a turn when Miller, at the age of 31, decided that having kids was something he really wanted. Rogers made a sweet decision to grow their family, because they didn't want Miller to ever feel like they missed out on having kids together. How thoughtful. Before we continue, guys, it's time for our subscribers pick. Take a look at the picture on your screen. Kenny Rogers' wife has finally broken her silence after his death. A widow, Wanda often reminisces about her life with Rogers through social media. On the one year anniversary of his death, she shared a series of poignant photos on Instagram. In the photo caption, Miller expressed her eternal love for Rogers, quoting his belief that one is never truly gone as long as they're remembered. Despite facing illness for several years, Kenny had contemplated what he wanted for his family after passing. He expressed to Wanda, who was 56 at the time, that he wanted her to find love again and be happy. Kenny Rogers died three years ago. Now his wife breaks her silence now. She has indeed found love once more, and she believes it aligns with both her and Kenny's desire to demonstrate to their twin sons that it's okay to move forward in life while embracing her new relationship. So guys, we would love to know your thoughts about Miller's newfound relationship. Drop your opinions and let us know what you think in the comments section below. Challenges of Parenthood At first, Rogers wasn't too sure about having more kids, but then he realized he didn't want to miss out on all the fun and important moments of his children's lives. He really understood how other parents felt when they had to send their kids off to college. He knew it was a tough and emotional time for them. Rogers knew he might miss important moments with his kids, but he decided to be a dad again because he loved Wanda Miller and wanted to make sure she had no regrets. Kenny Rogers, the famous musician, also had to deal with the ups and downs of being a parent. He knew that raising kids could be both wonderful and tough. In a 2006 interview with the Irish Independent, he openly talked about the challenges of being a dad. He proudly mentioned that he thought he was really good at being a father to his twin boys. But hey, he wasn't afraid to own up to his blunders, showing that even parents can mess up sometimes. It just goes to show that parenting is no walk in the park. Rogers became a dad when his daughter Carol Lynn was born in 1958. It was the start of his exciting journey into fatherhood. So here's the deal. Rogers ended up marrying her mom. Yeah, I know, it's a bit complicated. They eventually got divorced and tried to patch things up, but it just didn't work out. Now they're totally distant from each other. Rogers decided to step aside and let his daughter and stepfather have their special bond without any disruptions. A pretty cool move, if you ask me. According to Fox News, 
This decision showed how tricky it can be to balance family relationships when things are changing. It's all about keeping the peace. Rogers and his son, Kenny Rogers Jr., had a bit of a distant relationship, which was a recurring theme. Kenny Jr. was born from Rogers' third marriage. At first, they weren't close, but Outsider noticed that after Kenny Jr.'s parents got divorced, Rogers made a heartfelt promise to always be there for his son. Even with all the obstacles and being far apart, Rogers never gave up on being a dad. He knew how crucial it was to stay connected. When Rogers decided to retire, he felt bad about not hanging out with his older sons as much as he wanted to. In an interview with the Daily Mail, he admitted feeling sorry for not being there enough for his kids, especially during their important growing up years. Going to his younger son's football games and seeing how pumped they were made him realize how crucial it is to be involved in their lives. Rogers, just like other parents, understood how important it is to have experiences together and felt sad about the times he couldn't be with his older kids. Kenny Rogers' death. He passed away peacefully at home, with his loved ones by his side, from natural causes. Rolling Stone magazine shared the news. Although the exact cause of death wasn't mentioned, it turns out that Rogers had been dealing with mobility problems before he passed away. When Kenny Rogers passed away, a whole bunch of people like fans, other musicians, and friends started sharing their love and respect for him. Dolly Parton, a dear friend and partner in crime, shared a heartfelt tribute. In a touching video posted on Twitter, Parton shared her sadness, saying, I loved Kenny with all my heart. My heart feels shattered, like a piece of it just walked away. Parton's heartfelt words really struck a chord with fans, showing just how much Rogers meant to everyone who knew him and loved his music. Rogers passed away right when the whole world was dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, so everyone had to cancel their plans for big get-togethers. So his funeral ended up being a small and private affair, following all the safety rules and stuff. But don't worry, they promised to throw a big party for the music icon once it's safe to do so. The small funeral service showed how everyone had to deal with tough times and make changes during a really crazy period. Kenny Rogers was super thankful to his fans for always cheering him on and having his back throughout his amazing career. But wait, the farewell party took a turn for the dramatic when a legal battle with a former friend and employee, Kelly Junkerman, stole the spotlight. Talk about adding some spice to the festivities. TMZ recently reported on a lawsuit that has everyone talking. It's all about some video footage from Kenny Rogers' farewell tour that's causing quite a stir. So, apparently Rogers said Junkerman could film the tour, but only if he promised not to show the footage to anyone. But you know, things don't always go as planned. But oh no. Instead of sticking to the agreement, Junkerman went ahead and released the footage as a DVD called Kenny Rogers, The Gambler's Last Deal. Can you believe it? Rogers took legal action to stop the footage from being released without permission. They also asked for $290,000 in damages. The lawyers at Olin Law Firm LLC said that they want to stop the DVD from being released quickly because the estate wants to put out their own official version. The need to prevent any mix-up between the unauthorized leak and the real deal of Rogers' farewell tour led to some quick legal action. Apparently, some sneaky folks were sharing pre-sale links for the DVD, even though there were legal issues. This just goes to show that we need to stop those sales to protect the estate's interests and keep control over the official representation of the farewell tour. Kenny Rogers' retirement took an unexpected turn with a legal dispute, adding a mix of emotions to his farewell. It showed that even in the midst of saying goodbye to a legendary career, challenges can pop up. Rogers was really thankful to his fans for all their support. But the legal stuff showed how things can get complicated when artists try to balance their personal and professional lives, especially when they're going through big changes like retiring. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.